Well, the Albanese government has announced their draft proposal for the design of fuel efficiency standards. Joining me live is Dr Anne Webster, Shadow Assistant Minister for Regional Health. Thank you so much for joining us. You're at the Wimmera Field Days and you've spoken to some car dealers. Tell us more. Well, thanks very much, Janie. Yeah, I'm in front of Morrow's Motors here in Horsham. Uh, the field days are very busy. And can I remind your audience that we have very pragmatic people who live in the regions and we're all happy to have fuel efficiency standards uh, to improve fundamentally to improve the choice that people could have. But this is actually going to diminish choice. Those in the regions need cars like the ones behind because they can tow things, uh, they can fill up the utes and families can travel long distances. And that's the reality for people who live in the regions. So, you know, we don't want to find, I certainly will be fighting that regional communities should be paying for those who live in the cities where EVs are more practical. And uh, they're not that practical out here there are there are very very few and so why is that I mean we look at the roads and the infrastructure what else do we need to be looking at well, I, I think, you know, it's, it's just the technology itself needs to catch up so that utes can um, be EVs if that's the way of the future. And I, I think, you know, generally technology is going to continue to improve at a rapid rate and arguably the FES will help that. But the fact is regional people should not be paying the cost to advance our city counterparts, our city cousins. Uh, we all want to see those advantages, but I do not want to see regional people paying up to $25,000 extra for the car they bought today. You talk about the, the amount that people have to pay. What about second-hand EVs? We're hearing that not a lot of people are interested in them. No, well, there's a risk, isn't there? The battery is, has, only has a certain life. Um, I've heard that up to $42,000 is the replacement of some batteries, and the new car itself is 65000 Who's going to try and, you know, replace a battery or take the risk of buying a second-hand vehicle where you're going to be paying you know, just under 20000 for, or just more than 20000 for a new one. Uh, so EVs, you know, I've heard there's a big pushback on second-hand vehicles getting rid of an EV when you're done with it. Um, dealers are saying, no, thanks, we don't want it, we don't want the risk. And we're hearing that the, the batteries are, you know, not lasting as much as they do year on year, which is an obvious thing as well. Well, absolutely. Uh, we know if you've got a battery-powered anything in the house, it generally um, leaks battery power even when you're fully charging it uh, in order to, you know, be able to use the product, whatever that might be, uh, for the long term. So the whole battery technology needs improvement and that's in process. We understand that. All those wonderful scientists and physicists and electric electrical engineers are doing their work that's fabulous but at the moment there are still gaps and so this rush by labor to achieve this FEFs is by January puts everybody in the regions and uh, at risk uh, in a cost of living crisis of having to pay more what we'll see is people not buying um, secondhand vehicles or new vehicles because they can't afford it. I've had one dealer who said to me that he's going to have to lay off a third of his staff, he's got 40 staff, and he's going to have to lay off a third because of the FES. That's really pretty devastating for regional uh, dealers. So you've mentioned a few solutions. What else can be solved in your opinion for this? Well, I think there need to be, I've, I've heard of discussions about um, carving out primary uh, industry vehicles. Yeah, that's OK. But, you know, the family car, the SUV, is in this same category. Uh, I live in Mildura, so if I want to drive to Melbourne, that's only 600 kilometres, and you just can't do it on with a, a fully loaded family in an SUV. You have to stop, you have to line up for charging. It just doesn't work. And uh, those, you know, I've got one or two people who've said, oh, well, I've got an, F uh, an EV and it works OK for me. Um, it's a little EV, uh, they're older, they've got the time. That's not how families function. They're not in my experience anyway.